Welcome, everyone. I'm here with the famous A.J. Wilcox. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're famous, at least in my eyes, A.J., and I know you have many fans here. Uh, you ran a workshop for the first time here yesterday. Tell us about your workshop and what that, what a deep dive looks like and in, in how much time you wish you might have had <laughs> with, with LinkedIn ads, your specialty. Well, the workshop was really fun. Like you said, it was the first time I've ever done one of these at a conference, and uh, it ended up working out really well. Um, the idea originally was to have me talk about ads for the first half mm -hmm. and Josh Steinle to talk about the organic side of LinkedIn mm -hmm. for the second half. Yep. And uh, I thought for sure I was going to go in there and say, okay, who's here for the organic thing? And most of the hands would go up and I'd go, okay, who's here for the ads? And a few would come up and then I would be speaking to kind of that small group of people. But it worked out so well, especially with the attendees that you've brought here who are so hungry. Uh, I said, who's here for the ads? And almost every hand went up. Uh, who's here for organic? Almost every hand went up. It was just, it was the perfect audience. Wow. And I, I shared for an hour and a half. The first half was like, I was expecting to give the basics. And, and then I got to the Q&A portion and they started raising their hand and asking really advanced questions. And I went, ooh, I've got slides for this. And so I'd, I'd advance to like more of my advanced Very content cool. and Very answer cool. the questions. There's so much to learn with LinkedIn. It, it's daunting, uh, but it's also exciting. Give us a few of the exciting tips and thoughts you have on why you think LinkedIn is an incredible platform that you need to be marketing on. Well, LinkedIn, especially right now, is in the, the place where Facebook was probably eight years ago, where uh, when you share something, LinkedIn actually wants people to see it. So it's the easiest network in the world to go viral on right now. Um, to give you an idea, I'm connected to about 3,000 people. So you know, 3,200 people are going to be eligible to see my content. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not uncommon for my posts to get between seven and 11,000 views. Wow. And obviously that means there's a lot of people who I'm not connected to who are still seeing my stuff. Right. And to those who are involved in Facebook ads, or sorry, not Facebook ads, Facebook right now on the organic level, I mean, they would kill for that level of engagement. Yeah. What about targeting? You know, give us some opportunity there and, and some excitement. You know, uh, as we all would like to think, LinkedIn is possibly the best targeting platform. Is that getting more or less complex? And how hard is it to really start, you know, fishing in there and come up with some a good catch? Yeah. So LinkedIn's targeting has always been really good around B two B. They they're really good about targeting you by what you have in your profile, and that's a given. But here, about three years ago, uh, and this is something that. Anyway, between us, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no one's paying attention, right? Um, they they started coming out with the concept around targeting people about their behavior on the network, okay. and so you went from information that anyone could have to now the possibility of targeting people by information that only LinkedIn knows. Like, are you looking for a job right now? Uh, are you are you a veteran? Um, what topics are you interested in? And we just saw the beginning of this release a few weeks ago when LinkedIn released interest targeting. Mm -hmm. And what interest targeting is, is what are the topics that you engage around in the news feed that you connect around and have conversations around? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to see LinkedIn's targeting get uh, a lot more I won't say specific, it's just they're giving us more tools to reach our ideal audience. Got it. And what's new and exciting uh, with regards, to what, have they had to explain some of the newer releases that I know that, you know, and by the way, you can go back to six months with yeah. me if you want. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, something, um, LinkedIn actually just like last week released a, a big one where they talked about three different targeting facets. Uh, so one was, um, the partnership because Microsoft bought them. Now Bing has search data and LinkedIn has audience data. Mm -hmm. And so if you wanted the search intent, you would have to go to Bing or Google. If you wanted the audiences, you'd have to bid on them through either LinkedIn or Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, but now because you have a search and a social network together, their oh, data right. sets are combined. Now you can bid on people because of who they are and what they're looking for. Makes for an extremely powerful type of, of target. and. Uh, Microsoft has, you know, not a huge chunk of market share with Bing, so it's not like there's a ton of volume out there, but we're actively using it, and we're getting uh, people who are looking for LinkedIn ads mm -hmm. or, or anything related to LinkedIn ads who happen to be a marketing director at a company with more than 200 people yeah. clicking for about two bucks a click, wow. which is, you know, way better than we would be paying just going straight to LinkedIn. Got it. You and I had a conversation about the complexity of, of managing 
and seeing performance and attribu attribution back to actual campaigns. You know, you've toyed and noodled with Facebook and other platforms. How do you think LinkedIn stacks up in terms of difficulty of running campaigns, targeting campaigns, their interfaces, their UX experience, and what's changed in the last, you know, even six months to a year? Is it getting easier and, and, and faster, and is it, is it not that difficult to, to, to get in there and make, make magic happen? Yeah, um, I think early on with LinkedIn, they were the only network that didn't have conversion tracking. And this was you know, two, three years ago. Yeah. But uh, so a lot of people who went to LinkedIn went, well, we're just gonna use the tools that we have. And they would do things like optimizing campaigns by what got clicked on the most, you know, the highest CTRs. And then LinkedIn came out with conversion tracking. Um, but that's pretty much where they stopped because it's they don't have the insight down into your CRM to see what leads are doing after the initial form fill. Right. Uh, whereas Facebook is just now getting the data import where you can start to, to uh, pipe your data back into Facebook ads and, and they can see that. Mm -hmm. So that's the direction I see LinkedIn going. Right. Um, how, far, how far away is that? Because that's a really frustrating component of LinkedIn yeah. to not be able to see not just clicks and hits on your page, but actual conversions. I know it's a big priority for them. I've talked to three separate teams at LinkedIn who are all thinking about this problem. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if we have it in the next, I don't know, call it four to six quarters. Um, What's the workaround for that? Oh, I love it. The workaround is what it has always been on every network, which is just really good account planning. Because if you are sending all of your traffic to your landing pages with um, parameters in the URL that allow you to understand where that traffic came from, who it was targeting. When it hits your landing page, they have this URL uh, there on the page. And then when they fill out the form, there's an invisible field on that form that captures what their URL was, sends it through to the CRM. And now when the sales rep or whoever sees this record, they can say, ooh, they, uh, there was a touch where they came from a LinkedIn ad and the ad was targeting them because they were a CMO, and oh, they, you know, they saw ad version A. Mm -hmm. And that's all the information that you can see within the CRM. From the URL. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's not, uh, this isn't dealing specifically with LinkedIn ads. You can do this with right. every platform, yeah, right. but it's marrying your CRM data back into your spend data. Is that understand. sucking into Google Analytics as well? Uh, yeah. Um, Google Analytics can track down to the, the initial, well, to any site conversion. And so it's really helpful to blend that data in. Um, but if you have an online site, let's say you're a SaaS platform where you have multiple types of conversions mm -hmm. and it's all online, yep. Google Analytics can track all of those and you wouldn't even need a CRM to tell you when they bought the next package because Google Analytics could track that. Shout out to your buddy that is the CEO and founder of AdStage. Oh yes, Sahil. Yeah, exactly, um, so who I hope will be my, be my buddy as well someday. <laughs> their technology is really cool and, and certainly next year we'll have to get them here. Does their, their technology, I believe, will track the conversions. Can it bring it in? And if so, how is yes. that bring, being brought in? Yeah, so they have an integration into Salesforce and Microsoft Dynamics right okay. now. So what you can do is uh, you have your LinkedIn ad data being piped into ad stage, and they're also pulling in Salesforce or Dynamics. They're also pulling in Google Analytics. They can pull in analytics. Yeah. yeah, and so every morning or whenever you choose, there will be a, a new process where they, they take all of the data and they crunch it together and give you a report that, so you can tie together, I paid X and I got, you know, nine MQLs out of it. As an agency, you're managing multiple customers. Are you using AdStage and do you highly recommend that? And is, and you know, what are your thoughts on AdStage? And, and is that even better than noodling in and going into a Facebook and a LinkedIn and a Twitter and, you know, and, and trying to noodle within their platform? How are you guys doing it at your, at your agency, at your shop? Well, the cool part about AdStage was very early on, they got access to Google, Bing, Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, and LinkedIn's APIs. So they were the one network that you could log into to see all of your native campaigns there and even build in all of those networks. So for us as an agency, all we focused on was LinkedIn ads, but at the same time, they were the only third-party platform out there that was innovating and helping you build for LinkedIn. So it became our power tool that we would use. Got it. Um, and do you use that for ad management as well? They have some AI built into their, mm -hmm. to their technology as well. Yeah, so you can manage pretty easily. It's nice to, to see everything on a dashboard, especially across multiple clients, because in, in LinkedIn's own interface, we'd have to click between and like 
click down to a client level. But what I really appreciated about ad stage is their bulk tools. So you can do bulk actions, yeah. you can set alerts that say once this campaign spent X, then either alert me or do Y. Yeah. Pretty cool tools to help you manage when you have 28 you know, clients under your portfolio. Yeah, and perhaps the exact opposite interest that I have from a client perspective, and by the way, I'm your client as well, we'll talk about that in a second, um, is the actual difficulty of seeing the visual ad that you're running Right, and the results that that, the performance you're getting from that ad. So when I'm brainstorming with my team about what new ad should we run, I, we do not want to take the time to go into each of the platforms, refresh our memory about what's running, look at the That's data, right. look at the stats, it is ridiculous. And the fact, frankly, that there isn't another platform that I have heard about that, that would compete with an ad stage is fascinating to me. Maybe that's just because they rolled up this aggregation so early, yeah. but it, 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 it makes it really much better and much easier and much more fluent to, to, cre to create content. All right, so back to you. Um, tell us a little bit about your agency and the type of clients that, that you're looking for. Um, you know, I think there was some stat that at one point you were like one of the uh, most prolific uh, managers of, of high budget oh. PPCs on LinkedIn, <laughs> like like hundred million dollars or something, some some like Dennis Yu sort of number. That's yeah. like, you know, I've been tracking seven billion dollars of conversion. You know, Dennis is so great, and we're both fans <laughs> of him. I know. Um, but, uh, but, but what, what, what is your agency doing now? What kind of clients are you looking for? What's the right spend to think about outsourcing it to an expert like you? Yeah, well, when I started the company about four and a half years ago, my goal was if LinkedIn ads is a priority for you, if it's something that you as a company want to do better, we want to help you in any way that you need. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, for 90% of our clients, we are managing their, their ad spend. And then for 10%, we are training teams on how to manage it internally. Mm -hmm. We're auditing, we're doing small projects. Got it. Um, we, because LinkedIn ads is all we do, uh, we have the blessing to work with many of LinkedIn's largest accounts, their you know, biggest spending customers. Right. And that's cool, we've built this competency that uh, we're really good about managing large accounts and at scale. Um, but we also work with many very small accounts. Um, what we, we don't necessarily concentrate on the size of the company. We more care about how likely they are to have success. And we know if you have a large customer lifetime value, we'll call it like over 15K, uh, then you're going to be able to recoup the high costs of LinkedIn. Yeah. And we also know that if you have a budget somewhere between about three and 5K to start, then that's a good budget to at least get in, dip your toe in the water and see if it's, if it's gonna work. Yeah. What's the definition of working in your mind? Um, is it always you know, just making sure you can cover your user acquisition costs yeah. and break <laughs> even? You know, or or, or is, does it get more interesting when you can add in not just user acquisition costs, but lifetime value with the customer and have some inc incremental value so you can get multiples on it? Um, you know, is there some sort of conversion ruler, if you will, that you use to define success? Well, because we work with B2B, um, this is something I don't see people talking about a lot, but it's, it's a truth of the industry. When you're in B2B, you have these long sales cycles and it's hard to track. You're either tracking on a, on a trending basis or a cohort basis, and they're both going to tell you very different things. Yeah. So what we find is, you know, I've managed over 300 accounts, and there are only two of those accounts that I can talk about ROI with them. Mm -hmm. um, success really, the definition of success changes over time for every account. When you very first launch ads, you're looking for uh, a match between your message and your audience. And so if you are targeting a certain audience with a certain message, do you have click-through rates that show that this audience is reacting to it or they're ignoring it? Mm -hmm. And that's your first clue. Then after you've had quite a few clicks, you can move down to the conversion level and say, ooh, they are converting at this rate. Is that good or bad? What do we need to test there? Mm -hmm. And then you get enough conversions at that level, now you get to move further down the funnel and look at marketing qualified leads. And then you gather enough of those and you get down to sales qualified leads. Yeah. And so it really is, it's a, it's a longer process because it's B2B. Have you seen any interesting visualizations from, a, from an ad measurement perspective, any sort of cohort analysis or any technology that could help you with that? Uh, we built our own proprietary database because nice. no one else was doing that. Huh. Um, so it, it, it's funny when we talk to we'll talk to like the VP of, of marketing for you know whatever company we're working with, and one of the things I tell them is uh, 
if you're looking for someone who's going to give you a pretty pie chart at the end of every month, you're talking to the wrong team. <laughs> like, we are going to give you a pivot table, and it's going to be, uh, you're going to see data from us, and you're going to see us obviously enumerate like what that data is telling us, what the story is, but that's what we do, is we share data, because that's what's guiding our decisions, and we're not gonna sugarcoat anything. Got it. And how important uh, does, does A-B testing continue to be, and, and do you still firmly believe in test, 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 and try experiment, or do you feel like maybe branding is becoming more of a play? I mean, ironically, you were helping with me with CMC ads, mm -hmm. and it was more this gorgeous brand and trying to get it out there and trying to reach new people through the LinkedIn community, and obviously turned out to be very successful. Yeah. You know, we endured the perfect storm, AJ, of, you know, the Boston Marathon tax day, <laughs> school vacation, <laughs> Good Friday, you know, yeah, we've got like 600 people in the room, you know, so cr crazy. Uh, Passover, I forgot as well. <laughs> so That's I think right. there's, there's actually one more I forgot too, but I forget. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, um, you know, is, is branding becoming interesting on LinkedIn? I mean, just you know, pounding people, you know, and not just continually, perpetually looking, you know, at the conversion, you know, and the ROI from that perspective. Yeah, uh, I think, especially with those companies who have a very specific target audience. Branding is very powerful. Uh, if you talk about saying, we have nine million people we can market to, mm -hmm. then I look at the cost of LinkedIn clicks are gonna be between six and nine dollars, and that's really expensive to brand yourself. Mm -hmm. But I was just meeting with one of the attendees of CMC um, who said, you know, we have an audience size of 30,000 people globally, and I go, yeah, you don't have to ask them for a conversion. You just show ads to them to stay top of mind, yeah. because you know if you're entire audience is only 30,000 people, yeah. you want to be in front of them at every juncture, and it's okay to pay you know, that kind of money for right, it. Right, right. Cool. Well, what's next, do you think, with LinkedIn? Do you think they have anything up their sleeve, and do you have any hints on that that you'd have to kill me and turn the <laughs> mic off to tell me? <laughs> well, uh, because I'm a LinkedIn partner, I do get to see the roadmap early, and so, and, and I've signed about 30 NDAs with, <laughs> with the company, um, so I, I can't necessarily share about uh, things that are coming out. Um, but I can share, I think, the direction. I know partnerships and integrations are making a lot more sense for them. So we're, I think we're going to see deeper integration with Bing. Um, we're going to see deeper integration into CRMs, like Salesforce Dynamics. Um, uh, we just heard about Marketo, Adobe, Microsoft, and LinkedIn having a partnership. So pretty soon we're going to be able to hook in uh, marketing automation workflows into LinkedIn ads. And I think that's going to get really exciting. So. Yeah, we'll see. More targeting coming out, more uh, capabilities of the platform. I think it's about to get really exciting. Oh, and, and I'll add this. Ooh. Um, Facebook has been just so hot for so long, and, and I love it. I love Facebook ads, but the costs are rising so significantly on Facebook. We're getting to this point where B2B clicks are oftentimes between $1 and $2 per click. So my prediction is if you're going to pay 6 to $9 a click on LinkedIn for a, a lead that you know exactly what to expect, or you're going to pay $1 to $2 a click on, on Facebook and the quality is not going to be as great, it's not going to take very long of uh, those costs rising before we see a mass exodus of people saying, uh, Facebook doesn't deserve my dollars anymore. And I think we're going to see at the $3 per click range on, on Facebook, a lot of people are going to come and start playing in LinkedIn's ball field. Is there a reason that, that, uh, that, that, that LinkedIn would not consider lowering their price per click and, and oh. trying to really, <laughs> don't you think that'd be a good idea? I mean, wh I why were you sighing? Idea. I know. I, why wouldn't they? I mean, they, they're trying to capture market share. They're now really up against Google, if you think about it, especially when you lump in Bing. I mean, yeah, they've got a great opportunity. You think that might happen? Uh, I don't think it'll happen. Um, and I'm sighing because I've had this conversation with so many people internally at LinkedIn yeah. where I say, if you just cut your prices in half, everyone would come over and, and LinkedIn would become the de facto platform that everyone plays in. Um, but every time I bring that up, they go, oh, that's... That wouldn't fly for us, and I, I wish they would consider, um, because every other platform started with really low costs, and then competition naturally rose. Right. And so everyone who was a first mover came in, had success, and shared with their friends. And that never happened with LinkedIn. LinkedIn started at two dollars per click, and so immediately things like, you know, uh, twenty thirty dollar a month software still couldn't make that work, and neither could app downloads. So immediately they priced themselves out of so many markets, and so they never had evangelists go in and test it out and tell their friends. Could you ever get excited about trying to sell your clients on Bing and this, this, uh, this, this 
Cinderella story, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Microsoft owned, uh, you know, search engine trying to compete with Google. I mean, really? Do you think so? Can you can you get behind that? Uh, I get really excited about Bing. I mean, Bing is my default search engine on my laptop. I might be okay. the, the only one there in the digital marketing is. community. <laughs> but um, uh, what makes me so excited about Microsoft is I started out in digital marketing uh, with MSN Ad Center and, and Google AdWords. And MSN was never a big deal, but it was always kind of there on the fringes. And I watched them shut that down and then waited about one or two years until all of a sudden Bing ads rose. And in the course of about three years, they built their product to compete with directly Google, which is by far the most uh, advanced ad platform on the planet, and they built it in three years. So we're talking about the Bing ads team who really understands ad platforms and, and ads in general, mm -hmm. and they try harder than everyone else. Mm. It's, you know, and you have to cheer for the underdog. So I know not everyone uses Bing as a search engine, um, and you know, sometimes I don't either, but it's from an ad perspective, I tell everyone if you're on a low budget, go straight to Bing, because your cost per click is gonna be less than half of what it would be on Google. It's a, it's a great place to start. Terrific. Uh, what would you like to speak about next year, and what I am now guaranteeing you now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I got the gig. <laughs> <laughs> Concluded. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, sure, sure thing. Uh, the, uh, uh, we definitely want to have you back for a half-day uh, LinkedIn uh, workshop, so get excited about that, and we'll, we'll use this as a promotional video for that. Um, but what, what topics? I'm just, just, we won't, of course, you won't, you and I won't discuss the perfect topic to talk yeah. about with LinkedIn. Uh, it'll, it'll be the old standby, what's new and what's next. But fast forward a year from now, you know, and we'll come back to this, to this video and, and see if it was any truth. What do you think is going to happen differently between now and one year, which of course is a very long period of time? What, what would you love to see a session on that you could run here at CMC? Maybe even now, but what would you expect that to be next year? What are the pain points you're seeing? Well, I spoke the very first year of CMC, and I remember asking the question, who in here is actively managing LinkedIn ads campaigns? Mm -hmm. And there were probably three hands. It was a room of probably 30 people. There were probably three hands that went up. And so I taught the basics. And then you know, three years ago when I, I spoke, I spoke on the basics, and it was you know, 30% of hands. This year, when I had everyone raise their hands, it was literally like 95% of the room wow. were actively advertising. So I think we're past the point where I need to tell people this is what the network is and how it works. Yeah. I think we're to the point where I can start teaching the advanced stuff. Yeah. And so I, I think right now, I mean, we'll obviously talk about this, but right now I'm looking at it going, these are people who are already experienced and they want the meat. And so I, I want to give them the advanced content. Let's bring it on, AJ. Yeah. Sounds exciting. <laughs> and I know you'll get people excited around it. Well, listen, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Absolutely. Thanks, Byron. Thanks very much. Thank Thanks, you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> right on.